hey, new vlog. I kind of look like ass, but that's just because I took off red eye makeup. Um, and it kind of stings. So today is August, is it 27th or 28th? 27th, it is August 27th. It's like 10 o'clock at night. Uh, it's a Friday. And uh, this time I have like the whole weekend to work on stuff. So tomorrow, I wasn't originally going to plan to do this, but I am making Loki content tomorrow. I wasn't going to. That wasn't in the original plan. I wasn't planning on making any Loki content until um, after the con. But I've been doing the whole like that reverse cat eye, reverse smoky eye trend. Um, and as I was doing it, I was like, huh, this would look good with green eyeshadow. And my brain put two and two together and I was like, oh god. Do I really want to do this? Not sure. But I'm gonna try it. Because we're, we're most, well pretty, well yeah, we'll be wearing like masks during the con. So, this Part. My eyes and up really needs to stand out, and I'm kind of wondering if like a smoky moment like that would really help with help with that. Um, I don't know if I'm going because with the with that trend, you're supposed to like keep pretty much your entire top lid blank. I do line my upper lash line, but I kind of want to put gold up here, and I just wonder if it'll be better than what I currently do, uh, which is like the angled green in the outer and up top and then the gold on the inner here. But I figured since I'm doing it, why not make some Loki some TikToks out of it pretty much. I'm probably going to take pictures too. That way I can really compare the two and see which one I like better. Part of me is kind of wondering if what I already do is better for the costume with the skirt and everything and if maybe the smoky thing is better for when I'm just wearing the pants like at the Ren Fair and everything. I'm not sure. But also this weekend I'm going to do a full run through of my mom's makeup. Um, I, I wrote kind of sketched it out on a face chart just to try to get an idea of where things should go and how I want to do things. So we're going to do a full run through of that and uh, make adjustments as needed. I'm still debating on whether I want to wear strip lashes with any of my costumes. I think I might. I don't know. Let's see how I feel in the moment. I'll probably end up taking them with me to the con, and then we'll see how it's going on each particular morning. And then tomorrow, I gotta go to Ulta with my mom because we gotta get a. We're gonna get a powder foundation to try and match the wound to her skin um, because the flesh pigment, the flesh colored pigment that comes with it is pretty much, is too peachy. I started making the press on these and I was making a test run set of them because I got everything and uh, I didn't buy a UV lamp. I got gel nail polish and gel nail polish needs to be cured with like a UV lamp. I didn't buy one because we already have one. Um, from when we were messing with resin earlier this year and I thought, oh, I'll save money. I, I think you can see where this is going. But I was like, oh, I'll save money. I don't need to buy one. I can just use the one we already have from the resin. It's not curing. Okay, well, the sides of the nail are curing. The top is not. Um, and I think I ended up doing it for a total of five minutes. Um, and it's just not working. I think I figured out one. I don't think the, the UV light in that This one is strong enough to cure the gel polish and two the lights are only around the sides There's none on the top inside of the lamp So I think that's probably why the sides are curing but the tops not really so I found one <clears throat> I found one on Amazon for like 25 bucks. Hey okay, next clip Hi. Oh, white balance adjust. Okay. 
So, here we are. Today is the day after the last clip, and I am doing another run through of Loki's makeup while trying something different and doing that whole reverse cat eye thing. The stuff is currently being worked on. Honestly, I don't know if I'm going to full on do this when it comes to the con, but I want to talk about something that Fan Expo is doing. I don't know if I have any particular opinions about it at this point in time. I just find it interesting. So, it's weird. I have my camera, I have my phone set up on my the tripod I use to film my TikToks, and I'm used to when I do this the camera being on my left and having to look to my left because of how I hold hold my phone when I vlog. But the way my phone is set up, the camera is on my right, so it's weird having to look here instead of here. So if I keep looking over here. So people have been canceling, right? Guests have been canceling, which is no surprise given that the COVID numbers in Dallas and in Texas in general continue to rise because you know we're you know a hot spot in the country. I just did it, but the way. The way Fan Expo is going about announcing these cancellations is uh, not sitting well with a lot of people. And you know, they don't say, when they announce cancellations, they don't say why people are canceling. There's no real reason given. Usually if there is a reason, it's like due to scheduling conflicts or whatever. Something like that, right? So when I say, when I mention the COVID numbers, I'm just guessing that that's the reason that these people are canceling because honestly, I don't blame them. Now, pre-COVID, the way that Fan Expo would go about announcing cancellations, they would make like a whole post on like their Facebook and their Instagram and be like, so-and-so can't make it, blah, 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 blah. But the way they're doing it now kind of sus because they'll post an announcement and then in the same post a little bit further down in the text it'll say oh by the way so and so can't make it and this time around this seems to be a pretty consistent thing I think I talked about this in the last vlog I think I or two vlogs ago I think I just had that realization but it's really hitting people the wrong way, and I don't blame them because it is kind of weird. I do also see quite a few people like demanding that Fan Expo get back the same people that they originally had announced pre-COVID. And while I don't remember everyone who was in that lineup, I just remember that it was very good lineup. It's almost like people demanding this, and yes I do mean demanding, it's almost like, I mean do you guys not think that Fan Expo is trying? I'm sure they would love to get back all those big names, because um, that was a pretty damn good lineup. I'm sure they would love to get those people to come back. But I don't think it's gonna happen, guys. We're still in the middle of a global pandemic. The fact that this event is happening at all is impressive. If you don't want to go, who's holding the gun to your head? No one's forcing you to go. If you don't like the lineup, don't buy the tickets. Don't go see the people. Don't go. Just stay home. It's really not that hard. It's not a difficult concept to grasp. I've also seen some people call them like, call Fan Expo like scammers. I don't think you know what a scam is. That being said, I do think that if they're going to like, 
announce cancellations. They really should just stick with that whole tried and true thing of making a whole separate post and not just sneaking it in there with an announcement. And that's assuming that, you know, none of these announcements are not also going to cancel. I think I've talked about this too, but I'm gonna mention it again anyway. Ooh. I am nervous for where this one is going to be held, the room in the, in the convention center in which it's gonna be held. Because we know from talking to a friend that it's going to be in the smaller room of the K. Bailey Center. So we're a little nervous about that just because the con in 2017, Dallas 2017, was not well organized that year. It was also held in that smaller room. I think that year it was because the convention center was like doing construction on the usual big room. I don't really remember well. But that year they had Ann Summerhalder and Paul Wesley. And they had Jeffrey Dean Morgan and Norman Reedus from Walking Dead, which was pretty freaking big. They had a bunch of other people too. I don't remember the whole lineup. I, w I wish I did. But it was, it was a big deal. I just re really remember, I think that year, I think that might have been the last year I did, no, well, that might have been the last year I did Foxy. I'm not sure, but I remember being in Foxy and it was not a good time. Um, people were bumping into me pretty consistently. And people bump into me like all the time. Even at Irving, people bump into me, right? That's nothing new, but it really, it was very crowded, very crowded. There was hardly any room to walk. And that's not even talking about the photo ops. Oh my god, the photo ops. That was horrible. Um, it was basically just a crowd of people, not even in lines, because no one knew where to go. The volunteers didn't even know where to send people. If your volunteers don't know what to do with people, what are you doing? Especially since they've been holding Fan Expo for so long, especially since Fan Expo HQ, the company, holds cons not just in America but also in Canada. But they got to, it was at the point where uh, they stayed open an hour past closing time to get people their photo ops, um, and they still didn't get everyone. And that was, I believe, one of the few exceptions where people got refunded for photo ops. Because normally, you don't really get refunded for photo ops. But yeah, that was a mess. I remember that night we were at, we were eating dinner af afterwards at one of the restaurants by the hotel. And my dad was reading like the tweets and off Twitter and like posts off like Facebook and Instagram and comments and everything and people from people like tagging Fan Expo basically just being like what the hell was that as they should you know and then the next year they had it in the same small little room and it was much better organized much better i remember the photo op area they had like people with like a microphone and speaker set up in like the middle and the back of the lines they actually had lines that other one 2017 there were no lines until the next day that year was a lot better it was a lot more organized 
was a lot clearer on what was happening, on where people were supposed to go. But that's what I'm afraid of with this little room, because the reason they're having it in the little room this time is because of COVID. They're trying to keep a smaller room because of COVID, but, and if anyone knows, please correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't put a cap on tickets or limit how many people, as far as I know, can come. Which makes no, no sense at all. I feel like this kind of gives off hella vibes. I don't know. We'll see how it looks once I've got the wig on and everything. It's like 19 days away. Just going based off of the Fan Expo's little counter that they had, their little countdown thing that they have on their website. Yesterday when I looked, it was like 20 days away. I'm using a new product this time. I'm trying, I saw this on TikTok. It's the KVD Beauty Dazzle Sticks. Um, and I got the shade Electro Bolt. It's not really gold. It's kind of gold. It's also, it also seems to have like almost some green sparkles in there. So I'm going to put this on the top. This is what I meant in the last clip by it. Usually with a reverse cat eye, you put, you leave like the top alone. Maybe you put something like in your crease, which is what I did, but I have, I've legitimately never used this. I don't know if my camera's picking that up, but oh my god. I think I am going to end the vlog here because this clip raw is at like 25 minutes um i think i'm also gonna go ahead and end the vlog itself here thank you for watching like comment and subscribe hit the notification bell if you want to see more stuff like this i will leave the fan expo's link in the description as well as my social media. I'm Little Sapphire, and I will see you in whatever comes out next.